A somewhat divisive movie came out last year on May 17, 2019. It was called The Souvenir. But we're not talking about that movie. I actually haven't seen it. We are talking about Midsummer. That can't be right, the sky is blue. Directed by Ari Aster and starring the sad face emoji, Midsummer is a story of a group of college friends traveling to Sweden to take part in a special festival that only occurs every 90 years. It goes without saying, so I won't say it. Now, I really like this movie. It was one of my favorite for the year, but a drunk foreigner that I watch hated it so much. I wanted to try to bridge the gap between people who are right and people who are wrong. So there are tiny things that you can look at that are kind of the surface level positives of the movie. You've got foreshadowing in the tapestry at the beginning of the movie and throughout the movie. Pele at one point says to Christian offhandedly that there are a bunch of Swedish girls he can impregnate and then later he does. By the way, Christian can just say that he was in an orgy with like 15 women. He doesn't have to mention their ages, nor that they assisted in thrusting, nor that he ran around terrified naked, or that he was burned alive by his ex-girlfriend while in a bear costume. I mean, he was in a bear costume. She wasn't in the bear costume. She was wearing flowers or something. So, on the surface, it seems like a win. Also, the whole ritual of the elders taking the skydive is a sublimation of Danny's parents' death. She suffered something that was a tragedy, and they're trying to make it into something that is positive. So it's got a nice little flip there. And you've got the background being distorted, you've got some faces in the backgrounds from Danny's family. Those are some of the small things that are nice little touches. But the real stuff comes from the macro ideas that Ari Aster is able to work out in this movie. So on the surface, the movie seems like a basic horror movie in a foreign place a la Hostel made by that dolt with a hot wife Eli Roth. I mean, she's not on a day Armas hot, but she's hot. She's also a pretty decent actress. That's not important. Okay, it's when you peel back that first layer. That's when it starts to get good. So most people should have picked up the theme about toxic relationships. Danny has a toxic member of the family. <laughs> get it? One of the things that characterizes her family early on is being non-responsive. Her boyfriend Christian wants out, but feels obligated because Danny suffers a tragedy. And early on in those early scenes, specifically, they have to communicate in snippets over the phone while they're both talking to other people about that person behind their back. The big theme to watch here is communication. How does communication work? How are different characters communicating? What are they communicating about? But you'll see this throughout the movie. And early, part of this first scene is capped off with Danny screaming her lungs out, which excellent work by Florence Pugh by the way, and Christian just sitting there looking haggard. So we shift from the winter of her discontent to the summer of her discontent, and one thing that we learn is that none of the people who are part of this group are great at communicating, and they all have conflicts between them that creates a toxic relationship. You've got Christian and Josh, where Christian tries to steal the thesis idea of Josh. You've got the creepy ginger kid and everyone because he constantly puts himself first, notwithstanding whatever anybody else is interested in or wants to do or what's best for any of them. And then you've got the Swede in everyone, who, you know, gets everyone killed. And of course, you've got Danny and Christian, who both know that this is a bad relationship, but neither of them can admit it and get out. So we have the setup, but there's one important thing to keep in mind, and it's the difference between narrative storytelling and allegorical storytelling. And to illustrate this, we're going to use a children's fable. The Scorpion and the Frog. A scorpion, which cannot swim, asks a frog to carry it across a river on the frog's back. The frog hesitates, afraid of being stung by the scorpion. But the scorpion argues that if it did that, they would both drown. The frog considers this argument sensible and agrees to transport the scorpion. Midway across the river, the scorpion stings the frog anyway, dooming them both. The dying frog asks the scorpion why it stung the frog despite knowing the consequence, to which the scorpion replies, I couldn't help it, it's my nature. Keep this story in mind, it will come into play later. So the story moves on, some old people take a swan dive, and one really important feature of the story brings it all in focus. And that is the extra couple. Danny and Christian as a couple are constantly being shown apart. We've got Christian who forgets birthdays and anniversaries, and they mostly ignore or talk past each other. By contrast, the other couple is specifically shown together, affectionate. When they're in frame with Danny and Christian, they're usually in between the two, and they're responsible responsive and concerned about the other person's wants and needs. Importantly, and this is where allegorical versus narrative storytelling comes into play here, 
When the shit starts going down and friends start disappearing, the good couple is concerned. They recognize those signs and they won't rationalize it away. They immediately want out. Danny and Christian, however, constantly rationalize. Especially Christian. He finds reason to say that it's fine and keep pressing forward. Even after the swan dive and Josh disappears and Mark disappears and Pele is drawing weird pictures of Danny, they continue to convince each other that it's fine. This shows the real distinction between between a good relationship and a toxic relationship. This is all capped off in the ending where their friends are all dead and in a mirror to the early image of Christian and Danny, we have a group of people who are crying with Danny as she's going through this emotional experience, not just sitting there stone-faced waiting for it to be over. Danny picks Christian for the Nicolas Cage role in the reenactment of The Wicker Man. What is it? What's wrong, sister? And Danny in the final image finally smiles because she is able to let go of a toxic relationship. And she has a family. And she has people now. They are disgusting, inbreeding, homicidal sociopaths who dance too much, but that's family. So our drunk friend threw an inebriated fit saying he didn't believe the characters would ignore the bad things happening. This would be like criticizing the tale of the scorpion and the frog because you don't believe the scorpion would sting the frog and doom them both. It's exactly the point and the structure is clear if the scorpion had that realization, it would not be a parable. It would not have themes or underlying ideas. It would be jerk-off animal uber story. In the end, opinions are opinions. I just happen to have the right one. <laughs> <laughs>